This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In the uh, last lecture, we looked at limited, limited factor analysis. In this lecture, it's make or buy decisions, whereas you'll see it's the same sort of problem, but uh, made it a little more interesting. Uh, as always, let me explain with an example. Look at example two. The availability of material B is limited to 8,000 kilos. We make three products, X, Y, and Z, and um, the demand, 2,000, 2,500, and 4,000. So that's how many we can sell, how many we want to produce. Uh, the cost to make it ourselves is $10, $12, and $14 a unit. But jumping the line, each unit requires material B, and the kilos required, each unit of X needs three kilos, each unit of Y needs two kilos, each unit of Z needs one kilo. So if we were going to make in full, you know, we do want to sell 2,000, 4,000, but to make it ourselves, X, 2,000 units, each one needs three kilos. Uh, why? To make two and a half thousand units, each unit needs two kilos. And said, um, 4,000 units, each one needs one kilo. Uh, total, 15,000 kilos. But there is our problem. That if you look at the first line, we don't have 15,000 kilos, we've only got 8,000 kilos. But here, although we can't produce the units in full ourselves, instead of making them ourselves, we can buy them from somebody else. So unit X, if we make it ourselves, it would cost us $10 to make. If we don't make it ourselves, we could buy it from someone else. It could be more expensive, $13, and then sell it. Now, I'm not given the selling prices, but we'd assume um, that we charge the same price. You know, maybe, maybe X was selling for $20. Make it ourselves, and the cost will only be 10 Buy it in, the cost would be 13, we'd still make a profit. But of course, buy it from outside, we'll make less profit. We prefer to make it ourselves, it's cheaper. Uh, product Y, we can make ourselves for 12 or buy it from someone else for 17. We'd rather make it ourselves. Z, again, we'd rather make it ourselves. But we already know. We can't make them all ourselves because we don't have enough kilos. And so what we've got to decide is how many units will we make ourselves using the 8,000 kilos available? And how many units will we buy from another company? And we want, obviously, the cheapest cost. So what we do here is for each unit, we say what will be the saving per unit if we make ourselves. And what will it be? X, make ourselves cost ten dollars, buy from outside is thirteen. We'd save three dollars if we make the units ourselves. Why? 12 is against 17. We'll save $5 on every unit we make ourselves. Z, we'd save $2. However, although there's the saving, well, why? Why gives us the biggest saving if we make it ourselves? But, a bit like in the previous lecture, remember, they're using different kilos. We know how many kilos are needed per unit if we make ourselves. 
X needs three kilos a unit, B needs two, Z, B, Y, sorry, Z needs one, And so we say, well, with limited kilos that we can use, how much would we save per kilo using it on each of the three? The saving per kilo. X. It would need three kilos to save three dollars. And so every kilo used making X would save us a dollar making it ourselves instead of buying outside. Uh, why? It needs two kilos to make a unit and saves us five dollars. So for every kilo we use to make Y, we'd be saving two dollar fifty by doing it ourselves and not buying outside. Finally Z, one kilo to save two dollars. Dear, can't even divide two by one. We'd save two dollars. So there are the savings we'd make by making it ourselves. So which would we prefer to make ourselves most? One. Why? Because every kilo that we've got that we use to make Y will give us the biggest saving. Which would be second best to make ourselves? Said at two dollars. Third best, Y, at one dollar. And so, how many units of each should we make? We prefer to make X. But remember two things. The most, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my head at the moment. Y is best. We prefer to make Y. But remember two things. We'll never make more than we can sell, so the most we'd make is two and a half thousand, maximum demand. At the same time, remember, we can't use more than 8,000 kilos. However, I think I've enough kilos here. I will make two and a half thousand ourselves. Each unit takes two kilos. And so that would use up 5,000 kilos. So no problem. We've got enough to make uh, all of Y. How many kilos have we got left? Well, remember there were 8,000 kilos available. With 3,000 left. We can't make any more Ys because we won't sell them. So go to the next best, which is Z. And how many Zs can we make? Well, remember, we'll never make more than 4,000 because we wouldn't sell them. Uh, but there's no way we could do that. Each one needs one kilo. And so given we've only 3,000 kilos left, at one kilo each, we'll make ourselves 3,000 units. Uh, that uses uh, up all the material we've got, and so anything else we'd buy from others. And how many would we buy from others? Well, we all buy any wise. We've made enough, we've made everything we can sell. Uh, Z, well, remember, there's demand of 4,000. We're making 3,000 ourselves. So the other thousand we'd buy from outside. I've already said, remember, we are assuming that the selling prices are high, so we'd still make a profit. But we can't make it ourselves, we'd buy from outside. So that's uh, all the Zs we could sell. Uh, finally, though, X, we wouldn't make any ourselves. We'd buy all 2,000 units. From outside. So I hope that's clear. It's perhaps not, not immediately quite as obvious as pure limited factor analysis. 
Uh, so think it through, make sure you've got it, because the arithmetic itself is easy enough. But here, look at the savings per unit of the limited resource, the materials. The savings we make by making ourselves rank on that basis, and, well, the same will just be repeating itself.